This is going to be about newspapers and Joseph Mitchell. I saw a fellow I know, and I was surprised to see him. I thought you were supposed to be in Austin on business, I said. I was, he replied. It got canceled. Cutbacks on the budget. They're cutting back on travel. But that's not travel, I said. That's your bread and butter. That's the way you land new contracts. That's the way you make money. Travel is when you go somewhere just to see the sights. He shrugged. The one who came up with that should be fired, I said. Your business trip should be the last thing to go. He shrugged again. That's not the way it works, he said. Yes, it is, I said. They keep cutting that back. There won't be any business. I don't get the daily newspaper anymore. Haven't gotten it for at least five years. We stopped our subscription because there wasn't anything to read in the paper. Nothing of substance. The news? The paper couldn't compete with the electronic media when it came to news. And good writing? That was gone too. All that was left were the comics and the crosswords. Not enough to keep me going. Newspapers are extinct like dodos, sea cows, and those cabins we saw on our vacation. Newspapers used to be known for good writing. Hemingway was famously a reporter for the Kansas City Star. Newspapers had columnists, and they had political commentators, and in the best newspapers, the op-ed page alone was worth the price of subscription. San Francisco, Chicago, Detroit, New York, Philadelphia, these newspapers were known for their incisive writing in the news, social, sports, and their columnists, who practically took on the character of the city in their words three times a week. Newspapers had very loyal readers then. That's all gone now. Newspapers lost the news, and they gave up on good writing. As with my companion, in a desperate effort to preserve themselves, they lost the very core of their business. I'm thinking about this because I read a book by Calvin Trillin. He dedicated his book to a man named Joseph Mitchell. Trillin called him the New Yorker reporter who set the standard. Mitchell wrote, came up from North Carolina to live in New York City and worked for several newspapers. Later, he left the papers and worked for the New Yorker, where he expanded his sketches into fuller profiles. I got a book containing many newspaper pieces of his, and a much larger book of his work for the New Yorker. I found Mitchell's newspaper writing to be interesting, but not riveting. He was too calm and droll, not exciting. The one thing the pieces firmly established was his preferred subject matter. He had written about the famous, the powerful, the celebrated people. He did not want to write about any more business barons or society matrons. He liked to cover the street people, the ones who lived outside the conventions of the majority. He liked to hang with street preachers, strippers, anthropologists, farmers, prostitutes, psychiatrists, and an occasional bartender. I admire the imagery in vulgar conversation, he wrote. He enjoyed the company and the conversation of the folks in show business, a few of them anyway, like Jimmy Durante and W.C. Fields. He even found some interest in voodoo priests, even though he believed the practice to be complete quackery. All of those people who were, who they were, uh, all of those people were who they were and did not desire to be anything else. They lived on the periphery of the culture, not at the tip of the capitalist spear. And Mitchell felt that what they were was worth examining. His newspaper pieces were preliminary drawings, like the work of the cartoonists he admired. When he left the constraints of the daily grind to work for the magazine, he gained the room to expand his work into fuller pictures of these same people, 
the work that impressed Calvin Trillin. I will read that book and report on it. The thing about good writing is that it never goes out of style. The, the formative intelligence, the vital pulse, the trace of the human touch remains.